Here we go now. Martial looks for Sancho. Back to Anthony Martial. We could be scoring another one here. Anthony Martial. Let's go, boys. We're doing it up against Mourinho Spurs. Another free kick for me. The question is, can this time, can I put it in? Oh, it's in. I've actually scored off a free kick, guys. I still can't believe it. Bruno Fernandes has just scored. So we are back again with another episode of the PES 2021 Man United Master League series. Now last episode, a lot happened. We accepted a mega offer coming from Atletico Madrid for David De Gea, 72 million and that basically puts our budget at about 100 million for this window and a huge salary budget as well. So. This is going to be a big episode, over 100 million to spend. Apart from all the transfer business we'll try and execute in today's episode, we've still got a Premier League title race to fight in. As we are just two points off Chelsea, let's hope we can keep making progress towards that first spot. We've talked about this a lot in this series, signing Sergio Ramos, but today's episode could be the day where we actually sign him. So a lot's going to go down in this episode, transfers, Premier League games. So if you guys are enjoying this series, Keep the support coming in by dropping a like on the video, subscribe if you're new around here and let's get this underway. It's press conference time, get your questions answered by dropping them down in the comments section below. First one of the day, to increase your salary budget, go to your budget settings and change everything to receive a salary budget. Leave the last option as it is though. That's a very good suggestion. Now you guys know, I'm no expert on PES so I really rely on your guys' suggestions on how to make the experience as better and efficient for us. So this seems like a really good suggestion as we're trying to boost up our salary budget because players are expensive on PES. So we're going to do this now and hopefully this means we get more of a salary budget to work with. I'm pretty happy with our transfer budget right now, but this should help us maybe secure deals like Sergio Ramos to, of course, Manchester United. But for now, we're completing that. Next up, will you be playing Dean Henderson more as you've sold David De Gea? Are you thinking of signing a new goalkeeper? That is a very good question. I think to answer it, first of all, we are going to sign a new keeper because right now with De Gea's departure, we're left with only Dean Henderson and we do need more depth in that position. The season is long, but the real, real question is whether we sign a top caliber keeper who will be number one ahead of Dean Henderson or do we bring in a similar keeper of that stature to maybe compete and push Dean Henderson to the next level and basically treat Dean as our number one keeper? That's a big question. In today's episode, we're going to focus on another signing and not really the goalkeeper. So I'll keep that choice to you guys. What kind of a keeper we should sign? Let me know in the comments section. The call is yours. Big shoes to fill because David De Gea is on his way out. Next up, will you give Isaac game time as I rarely see Isaac play? Probably just one game so far. Fair enough, that's true. Isaac hasn't been given the opportunities he probably deserves. But the problem is, look at our front three right now. Anthony Martial, Sancho and Rashford, where do I fit him in? And if we need to fit in someone else, probably Mason Greenwood is ahead in the pecking order. So it's difficult. The reason we signed him was to be backup and a future prospect. So that's something Isaac needs to deal with. But if an opportunity presents itself with an injury, Isaac, I'm sure, will be there to take it. But for now, press conference is done. Let's move on. For the first time in this series, Jaden Sancho stepped up. Last episode against Spurs, he was absolutely fantastic, scoring and assisting in the same game. And that's why he picks up a player of the episode award. You know what, guys? I don't really want to be wasting any more time for negotiations because I think getting Ramos from Real Madrid is going to be a real fight because we're up against one of the powerhouses of football, of European football, and to lure Ramos in and to get him away from Real Madrid is going to be a challenge in its own. So I think we should start negotiations right now. Not gonna lie, we may be dealing with a few problems here because Ramos wants an unbelievably higher annual salary because this is just nuts. He's not impressed with our current offer. We need to propose more attractive terms if we want the negotiations to be successful. And apart from that, Real Madrid do want a lot of money for Ramos as well. So this is going to be an in unbelievably difficult transfer to pull off. It was a lot easier when it was before, but man, Ramos does want a lot of money. Okay, so to start things off, this is what I'm going to offer Ramos. It's extraordinary wages and transfer fee, but if we want to lure Ramos to a club like Man United, I think that's what we're going to have to do. So this is what I'm offering as my initial offer to Madrid. Let's see what they come back and say. With the sale of David De Gea, we do have more breathing room in the transfer market, more money to splurge. And that means 
Koulibaly is not off the charts. We know Man City want him in real life, but why not bring him to Man United? This is probably if the Ramos deal falls apart, so it's gonna be tough. Now, we'll see how much Napoli do want for him. 56 million, and they're resistant to parting ways with him. Wow, and he doesn't even have a release clause. Let's offer 61. And annual salary, he's not convinced his role at our club will be the right one. We'll really need to pay a lot of money to him again. Man, these wages stuff, man, is so annoying. Okay, this is what I'm offering at Koulibaly, and we'll just see if he's willing to join Man United. Of course, Ramos is still first choice for me, but it's good to have alternatives. To keep things rolling, we are simulating this one against West Ham, and thankfully, we walk away with a 1-0 win that should put us... Very close to the top of the table. We're keeping pace with Chelsea and Liverpool, which is awesome. We've got a cut scene about the transfer window. Let's see what this is about. Mid-season review. If we can maintain this forward momentum, we'll be very well placed to achieve this season's objective. So keep your eyes on the prize. Okay, boss, we will. Before we get any further, a lot of people have been asking me to show you guys like the detailed stats of the Premier League this season. So... Let's get right into it. So we're halfway through the season basically in January now. We're third in the Premier League and this is how the relegation zone looks. I'm surprised seeing Leeds in here with Burnley and Newcastle. That is, that's a weird one. But we're in the top four with Chelsea, Liverpool and City. Okay, so Anthony Martial is the top scorer in the Premier League at the moment. I had no idea. Along with Lacazette with 11 goals. Mane Firmino in there as well. Calvert-Lewin. Do we have any other Man United player? Bruno Fernandes is in 17th with 6. We've got Rashford and Pogba 24th. Not bad at all. Martial could win the Golden Boot this season. Assist-wise, it's Fulham Seri with 8 assists. But we've got Sancho and Pogba in there with 5 assists apiece. So, not bad. A lot of Man United players on these standings. I'm sorry to report that Sergio Ramos has declined our offer. And therefore, we won't be able to sign him. He's the definition of Real Madrid football. Our offer needs to be very attractive for them to even entertain it. Fair enough. Koulibaly, the same. I don't want to be paying more money for Koulibaly, so we're going to negotiate more with Real Madrid and make this happen. We're going to sim this next game against Brighton to keep the pace, and we do end up winning 4-2. Not bad at all. We're still two points behind Chelsea and one behind Liverpool, but we are keeping the pace with them. All right, we're going once again with the aim of signing Ramos. And I'm going big this time because Real Madrid aren't willing to let him go. Do I just pay his release clause? I think I should, you know. You know what? What we'll do is this. We'll put in like a 15, 20% sell-on clause. 21.5 million. That is a lot of money, I know, but we're doing it, guys. We are doing it. Annual salary. Let's bump it up to about 24, 26 mil. We're, we're trying to make him sign, boys. We are trying to make him sign. You know what? Let's, let's make it 24. Let's not get carried away. We'll good, give him like a good appearance bonus. A clean sheet option as well. Now, that's what I call a top-class contract and a two-year deal. Okay, this is what we're going to offer Sergio Ramos. Now, the real question is if he's going to accept it or not. And are Real Madrid going to accept it or not? We'll see, though. But that is my offer. Let's hope we can pull it off. Getting an FA Cup game out of the way, which we do end up winning against Crystal Palace in the early rounds, which is absolutely amazing. Now, from what I know, the Carabao Cup doesn't exist on PES, which is hilarious, but... That does help us out with fitness. Signing negotiation chapter one. Negotiations with Sergio Ramos are moving along nicely, but I think we can push him to agree to terms that are a little more favorable to us. Let's go back to the negotiating table. Okay, what does that mean now? What does that mean? Sergio Ramos is willing to sign for 22.368 mil. Okay. Okay, okay. So they do want a bit more money, but they're willing to work with us. Real Madrid are willing to work with us. Now, I think according to that cutscene, I could get him for a bit cheaper. But you know what? Do I want to risk it for like a million? No, not really. So I'm going to accept terms and we're going to pull it off. I don't even care at this point. We're doing it, guys. We're absolutely doing it. Sergio Ramos, the Man United is a done deal. What a transfer. It's taken us a while, but we've pulled it off. Announce Sergio Ramos, man. Where the hell is the cutscene? I want him available for my next game. Come on. I think the cutscene is here. Are we going to get it now? Yes, we are. Sergio Ramos is a Man United player now. We've pulled it off, man. Look at him here at the training ground. Looking absolutely happy. I'm not too sure because he's moving from a Champions League club to a Europa League club. But we'll work with it. We'll work with it. Meeting up with Ryan Giggs here. 
We've completed the signing of Sergio Ramos. Let's go boys, what a signing this is. Sergio Ramos literally goes right into our team, man. Honestly, that defense looks so much better. The only real question I have is who do we start? Lindelof for Harry Maguire. For now, I'm going to keep Maguire in there because he does boost up the team chemistry. And also, who should we now make our captain? Who gets the biggest boost? Oh my god! Making Ramos our captain gives us a huge boost on the chemistry. I know it's kind of unrealistic to give like a brand new player the armband, but when it's Sergio Ramos, you just got to do it, you know, and that's exactly what I'm doing. This is how the team's going to line up against Everton here. We're up against the big team. James playing in that cam. They've got Alan Decore. This is going to be a tough game for us against Everton. Oh, and finally, we can change squad numbers. So let's go around to do that. So Ramos is going to wear number four for us. We're going to have... Where, where, where's he gone? Uh, Van der Beek. We're going to have Van der Beek wear 34. That's about it, really. Any other kit numbers you guys want me to change, let me know in the comments section. But finally, we can change squad numbers. Oh, I just want to get Ramos the ball just to get a feel of him. Oh my god, he's wearing the armband as well. What a signing we've pulled off. I know I'm a Barca fan, but I appreciate Ramos a lot. He is by far one of the best centre-backs this sport has ever seen. There's no denying it. As a captain, he is just unbelievable. So, yeah, very excited to use him on PES because everybody's telling me he is just unreal. So... Let's see what he's all about. First big test for Ramos. Can he get in behind here and save us? Calvert-Lewin. That is Sergio Ramos at his best. Brilliant defending there from him in a position where I thought we were probably going to concede. So fair enough. Oh, that's problems here for us. Not really when you've got Sergio Ramos. A strong header to get the ball away so far. He's been nothing short of perfect. That's another good ball played in and that's another clearance from Ramos. This time not the best of clearances but Luke Shaw cleaning things up. And I might try and make a run with him. Anthony Martial now, back inside for Rashford, sees Sancho, does well to find Bruno Fernandes, much more like it, can Bruno get the shot off, good defending from Everton to deny him space there, a good attack but we need to be better in the final third. Last episode I actually managed to score a free kick on Pez, can I do it once again, come on Bruno put this one in, it takes a deflection and it's enough again scored a free kick, yo free kicks are pretty easy on Pez man. We've made it 1-0 against Everton in a game where we weren't, weren't really doing well in the final third. So, I am glad this has come. Big goal from Bruno Fernandes. It was a lovely free kick. I think he took a bit of a deflection on the way, but we'll take that, no doubt. Man United make it 1-0 against Everton. A big goal from Bruno. I do want to take a look at the replay for this one. Let's have a look at it. Yeah, it did take a slight deflection, but it's in the back of the net. It counts. Man United 1-0. Here we go now, Marcus Rashford. Releasing Luke Shaw. There's the pace of Luke Shaw. He is pretty quick, guys. That's for sure. Looks now for Marcus Rashford. Finding space to try and curl it in. And that was awfully close. Would have been my best goal on PES, probably. Excluding the free kicks. Okay, this might be the first time Ramos has been caught out. He recovers well. Ramos has to chase Calvert-Lewin here. Does really well to keep hold of him. Sergio Ramos is unbelievable. He's had a fantastic debut so far. Sancho. Looks for Martial. Sending Sancho through. It's a lovely pass here. Sancho getting in behind. Can he score though? That's the real question. It's a beautiful finish off Sancho. He's finally come alive. Last episode against Spurs, he was wonderful. And now against Everton, getting in behind that defence and scoring off a lovely finish. This has been the perfect performance from us here. We've defended like champions. We've created like champions. And here we go. We're 2-0 up against the good Everton team. As Man United scores, Sancho scores. We're in good position now to secure the result. Juan Bissaka gets in behind. Looks for Anthony Martial. Shoots and it could be 3-0 right there. But a big save from Jordan Pickford. Now it's not Pickford. It's someone else, the Everton keeper. Interesting. But yeah, another good run of play. But we couldn't score. We've got to be better in the final third. Big chase here for Sergio Ramos. And he puts in a bad challenge. That's the first big mistake Ramos has made here. And that could cost us big save from Dean Henderson. He's making a name for himself here at Man United already. That was a woeful mistake from, of course, Sergio Ramos. He does have a mistake in him or two defensively, but big save from Dean. That's a big moment for him with the departure of, of course, David De Gea. But we might have a chance on the other end. No, we don't. We messed that one up. With that, guys, it's full time. I mean, a convincing performance. 2-0, clean sheet. Ramos was great for the most part. Dean Henderson was awesome. Yeah, no complaints whatsoever. In fact, brilliant. Looks like Sergio Ramos is already settling really well at Man United. He seems to be happy with my instructions, which are super basic. But anyways, that's awesome to see. But that win against Everton puts us just a couple of points off Chelsea now. 
We're in a good spot in the Premier League. Talking more about potential signings, now we do have money in the bank left and I'm thinking we could seriously improve our backline by signing Alex Telles as well. I know he's linked with Man United in real life. I'm happy with my attack in midfield. So getting Alex Telles, maybe shipping Luke Shaw out of the club and having Telles and Brandon Williams in that position or having all three for more squad depth could be the play. We could definitely afford Alex Telles because we've got the money. 37 million, that's his release loss. We can easily afford that. Perfect. We're going to have to offer him a bit more for the contract purposes, but I think we'll get that done as well, so no problem. So, Teles is definitely on the cards that, for the signing that we make in the next episode. Even if we sign Teles, we'll have enough money to bring in a keeper. That's what happens when you sell a player like De Gea. So, let me know in the comments section what kind of suggestions you have for a goalkeeper in all, because it's going to be a big few episodes in this series trying to, you know, reinvent the team after selling De Gea. Offer coming in for Anthony Martial from Atletico Madrid. They can go to hell. We're not selling Anthony Martial at all. What kind of offer it is? I am curious. Um, 54 million. That's all. Get out of here. Get out of here. End negotiations. We're not selling Martial to anyone. Our next game is against Newcastle who are in the relegation zone. But I kind of do want to play this game because I'm actually enjoying the best gameplay now. So we'll give this one a go as well. We'll give Mason Greenwood an opportunity up top with Sancho and Rashford. Pogba starts. Ramos continues to captain the team. Lindelof. I wanted to see how he'll fare in a partnership with Ramos. So let's see how that works. This is our team. United Newcastle. Let's get into it. Lovely play to find Sancho. It is now Bruno. Brilliant pass for Sancho, who tries to lay it off for Greenwood, but nobody made the run. And to be fair, Sancho's pass was a bit tragic, I'm not going to lie. And by the way, you guys can see Van Der Beek is now donning the number 34 jersey. Oh, we could get caught out here. We could get caught out here. Where's my left back? Luke Shaw finally tracking back. We might have to go in here with Ramos, who messes up there. But big challenge coming in, and Dean Henderson punches that one away. Ramos has been a bit suspect in like the end of that last game and now during this attack but oh well greenwood looking to find rashford who fights for that ball here marcus brings it inside oh my god marcus rashford so close to scoring that you guys have been telling me to give finesse shots more of a go i did that here but yeah why good dribbling there from rashford though oh that staff lindelof needs to do well there but he can't big save from dean henderson excuse me do we even need a new keeper? Dean Henderson is literally saving everything that comes at him. Corner from Newcastle. No way are we conceding off a set piece. That is massive from Dean. What a save and Ramos is there to clean things up and bring the ball forward. Oh my god, Newcastle once again get in behind and they've missed another big chance. Tell you what, we've been pretty average in this game. Newcastle have had chances galore to try and take the lead, but they've missed all of them. I was handling myself really well against teams like Spurs and all, but nope, Newcastle... I just can't seem to do anything against them, although, no, look at this kind of defending, it's it's just so difficult to do anything against, It's it's been a real struggle, and I'm considering bringing on someone like Martial, because I think we need him, so, you know what, let's actually do exactly that, on comes Anthony Martial, for Greenwood, he's not had the best of games, so, that's exactly what we're going to do, Newcastle have turned me there with Matt Ritchie, oh, why has one Bisaka just run past the defender there, big block from Ramos, chance for Newcastle, wow, Fair enough, you know, this is this is the kind of goal that I can't complain about. Maybe Dean Henderson should have done better, but Sean Longstaff with an absolute screamer right there. Newcastle make it 1-0. That's unbelievable right there. What a strike and we might be suffering a defeat after a long time in this series as Newcastle make it 1-0 against us. That's tough. Newcastle, yeah, they're going to make it 2-0. We've committed way too many players forward and that's a big miss from them. That's a goal that could have sealed the result for them. Can we take advantage though of Newcastle's unbelievable full time and it just wasn't my day. I just played terrible football and we suffered because of it. A wonder goal from Longstaff gives them a 1-0 win against us. It's, it's annoying but it is what it is as they say. We take a big L in the Prem. Okay, so it's still a two-point gap between us and Chelsea but now Man City have overtaken everybody and now they've got a three-point gap over us. Fair enough but... This defeat wasn't all that bad because I thought Chelsea were going to pull away. Okay, this is not good. Rashford has suffered a muscle inflammation injury. He should be back soon. That's that's okay. He should be back in January. So he's not going to miss any of the major games. That's fine. It's been a pretty big episode for us, man. A lot went down in this one. We signed Sergio Ramos, of course. A massive signing for us. 
and the next episode we continue doing more signings because we've got more positions to improve upon potentially the signing of Tedes depending on what you guys want apart from that we do have to so sort out the goalkeeper situation what do you guys want to see a top class keeper or like a mid-level keeper that can compete with Dean Henderson so big decisions to be made in that next one for now player of the episode and this is a tough one to decide because I think a lot of players were decent in this episode Ramos kept a clean sheet in that first game and he was pretty good but so was Bruno Fernandes with that wonderful free kick so probably between the two of them I suppose or maybe actually Sancho, Bruno and Ramos those are the three contenders for player of the episode yeah I think it's gonna be that but for now we're wrapping up today's episode next episode more transfers and whatnot drop like if you've enjoyed subscribe if you're new around here and well I'll catch you all next time